I think it is interesting seeing two maintenance trials, one with rituximab primarily first line and one with ofatumumab in the relapse setting, both of which are looking pretty good for a PFS advantage. So, as you know, there's a lot of discussion, controversy in the indolent diseases. We're not curing these, but strategically, is it best for us to push our patients into deeper emissions that last longer? If that comes at the cost of toxicity, is that a risk that we should be taking? So I think in the context of the whole debate about intensity of first-line treatment, the maintenance strategies are really quite interesting because potentially we can push out those first remissions or second remissions by using antibody therapy that actually the toxicity profiles look pretty good. We've seen more ibrutinib data, um, very impressive relapse refractory setting. We've seen some upfront data coming through from the MD Anderson in the 17P deleted cohort. Again, very impressive. We've seen the Idella data maturing phase three. Good to have a look at how that's panning out in terms of efficacy and side effect profile because uh, there have been some questions about colitis, pneumonitis. So it's good to see that data uh, actually maturing. And of course the ABT perhaps further behind on the development program than the, those other two, but very impressive drug, uh, MRD negative remissions in the marrow. So all of these things are going to be coming into practice monotherapy, combination therapy, we're going to have to see. It's an unmet need in terms of financial ongoing therapy, benefits, toxicity. It's an unmet need in that we don't really know what's going to happen to patients on therapy long term. We're seeing these Richter's transformations and that's certainly a bit of an open question. We've seen that with some of the ibrutinib data and clearly the relapsed refractory setting Richter's transformation, the patients are simply not surviving. So that's, a, that's an, an area of pressing unmet need. The MD Anders have, have shown some interesting data on complex carrier type CLL, again showing these patients are not really responding so well or they're not holding their emissions with ibrutinib. So these are all areas for exploration with trial design and development going forward. So that's the strategic play. Can you take a combination of drugs that act on different pathways? So you could hypothesize a, an antibody targeting the cell surface combined with a proactotic agent like ABT, combined with a signaling pathway inhibitor. It's easy to have these ideas in the back of an envelope. Of course, to get these trials up and running, you need a lot of collaboration between companies. You need buy-in from the research groups and, and the patients. But certainly that holds great promise. The idea that we can hit the disease hard, clear the marrow, and that dream term we all use, chemo-free. If we could do that in a chemo-free way, well, won't that be fantastic?